So I, I, I always feel like if I give a reading, I have to mention um, the artists who gave me permission to use their work in this book. And on the cover is the hoodie by um, Hammonds, David Hammonds. Um, it was done in 1993. Many people believe that he did it after the killing of Trayvon Martin. But it was actually done, not necessarily in direct response to, but right after the beating of Rodney King. Um, and Hammonds is a... Uh, someone who's influenced by Duchamp and likes to say that he is um, um, a member of uh, Duchamp's outpatient clinic. Um, and he did things like uh, selling snowballs on the side of the road. And I, I always, whenever I see that image, I always think that he's trying to allow you to have whiteness melt in your hands. Um, and another uh, sort of canonical piece of his is the basketball hoop, the bejeweled basketball hoop, which when it was originally um, shown, was shown with the hoop very close to the ceiling to um, create a metaphor around aspirational living for inner city black youth. This is um, Hammond's in a piece called Consider in Black and Blue, which is an extractive poem inside of Citizen, um, which is why it's there. When you're alone and too tired even to turn on any of your devices, you let yourself linger in a pass stacked among your pillows. Usually you are nestled under blankets and the house is empty. Sometimes the moon is missing. And beyond the windows, the low gray ceiling seems approachable. Its dark light dims in degrees, depending on the density of clouds, and you fall back into that which gets reconstructed as metaphor. The root is often associative. You smell good. You're 12, attending St. Philip and James School on White Plains Road, and the girl sitting in the seat behind asks you to lean to the right during exams so she can copy what you have written. Sister Evelyn is in the habit of taping the hundreds and the failing grades to the coat closet doors. The girl is Catholic with waist-length brown hair. You can't remember her name. Mary? Catherine? You never really speak except for the time she makes her request and later when she tells you, you smell good and have features more like a white person. You assume she thinks she is thanking you for letting her cheat and feels better cheating from an almost white person. Sister Evelyn never figures out your arrangement, perhaps because you never turn around to copy Mary Catherine's answers. Sister Evelyn must think these two girls think a lot alike. Or she cares less about cheating and more about humiliation. Or she never actually saw you sitting there. That piece is followed by this image. It was done by um, David Michael Murphy. And when I first saw it, I thought it was photoshopped. It's um, Jim Crow Road in Flowery Branch, Georgia. And I asked him, um, did he ask the residents why the street is called Jim Crow Road? And he said he did, and they said that it was named after James Crow. And <laughs> <laughs> why not, right? And, um, and so I said, did you ask them why they didn't just call it James Crow? And he said he did, and they said, um, well, we call him Jim. And... <laughs> So, but apparently there are many Jim Crow roads around the country. I wanted to start with this image because for me it was a metaphor of how we live in the United States. Um, the White Houses on, and the lawns and the protective lawns. That, that sense that um, Jim Crow segregation um, 
has determined our relational positioning up against the other. That um, we live in homes where people who um, don't look like us, um, to use um, Tennessee Coates' phraseology, um, don't belong in our homes. Don't, um, you know, get asked to enact their ethnicity for our amusement or our pleasure. Um, so it seemed that segregation forever, the rallying cry for the KKK, managed to infiltrate itself inside the culture of the American imagination and has kept the races separate in ways that are um, both um, domestic and institutional, structural, legislative. Uh, I, I was, I, I don't know, how many people have watched the um, 13, the 13th men? Um, where the white politicians are now um, admitting that the whole drug policy, the whole war on drugs, was meant to reinstate Jim Crowism by getting, by targeting blacks and using criminalization as a way of pulling them out of the culture. That that was the original plan, and that's how it managed to work itself out. So, 25 percent of the world's incarcerated people are incarcerated in the United States. 25%. And let's not ask what percent of that is African American because then we would all have to cry.